Easter's here. Whee! Gone are the days of not drinking, exercising more and staying off the chocolate. And here is the day of laying straight back onto that chocolate, eating it all in one go, and Poe going up three dress sizes in one afternoon. But of course, that's not the true meaning of Easter. Easter's about the resurrection of Jesus, right? Or baking and dressing up or seeing the family. Well, here at Truth Loader, we thought that just as a special one-off, we'd each take a look at something you might not know about the Spring Festival. We should say that this is pre-recorded. Unfortunately, we're not live today, but do please leave your comments anyway, and we'll come back to them next week. Anyway, happy Easter, Truth Loaders. And what could say Easter more than causing yourself massive pain and injury, right? So let's head to the Philippines, where devout Catholics have taken the religious aspect of Easter one step further by voluntarily crucifying themselves. Here's Laura with more details and a great big, and a great big, do not try this at home. Please don't try this at home. Every year on Good Friday in the northern Pampanga region of the Philippines, dozens of Catholic devotees, mostly men it has to be said, take part voluntarily in reenacting the crucifixion of Jesus. Yes, we mean that they actually let other people drive nails through their hands and onto large wooden crosses that are then hoisted up in the air and there they hang in the sweltering heat for hours. Hundreds this time of people also take part in self-flagellation, which involves uh, marching along down streets and whipping themselves on the back which often results in very deep cuts which are then open to nasty infections like tetanus. And so bad was this that in 2008, a Minister of Health in the country actually warned people to get tetanus shots before taking part in such ceremonies as they were leaving themselves open to becoming seriously ill. Now the people that take part in this believe that it is good for their soul and that it is a demonstration that they are showing a atonement for their sins. But the Roman Catholic Church disapproves of the ceremonies and says that it demonstrates a misinterpretation of the Roman Catholic faith. These gory rituals have been taking part in the Philippines since the 1950s and are believed to be a fusion between folk tradition in the country and the more traditional teachings of the Roman Catholic Church. And the ceremonies now attract thousands of worshippers and tourists every single year. And once again, do not try that at home. Not that any of you would be stupid enough to give that a go. But if you don't want to crucify yourself, but do respect the religious aspect of the festival, what are you supposed to do? Well, Adam's been reading up on a little Easter egg company that wants to spread the Christian message as well as the chocolatey fingerprints to homes throughout the UK. Easter eggs are absolutely everywhere at this time of year. In fact, in the UK alone, we're likely to buy around 80 million of them to share with our family and friends so that they can fatten themselves up by gorging on chocolate for several days. But most of these eggs don't carry a religious message, and that's something that the Meaningful Chocolate Company, which is based in Manchester, are trying to change. They've been campaigning to get the real Easter egg, which does carry a religious message, onto supermarket shelves. But they haven't been all that successful, because, well, most supermarkets are still refusing to stock it. In fact, it's got to the point where one bishop has complained that supermarkets have a clear agenda against carrying religious messages in their stores. But maybe they don't need supermarkets at all. Last year, they sold 70,000 of these eggs just using the internet and small stockists. But there's always one thing that the church and the company refuse to mention, and that's that giving eggs to each other at this time of year is actually a pagan tradition that goes way back to before when Christianity even entered these fair isles. Speaking of chocolates, whilst we mostly all love to eat it, it's not historically been quite so nice for those who have to produce what we enjoy at Easter. In recent years though, with the fair trade movement really taking off, the lot of farmers has been improving overall. Not for everyone though, because a new report from Oxfam has highlighted the plight of women in the cocoa growing industry, who are still struggling to make ends meet as a result of unfair laws and discrimination. Here's Grace with more details. During Easter, many people exchange chocolatey treats, usually in the form of eggs, but while you're enjoying your sugary goodness, why don't you take a few moments to think how ethical this chocolate really is? 
The truth is, according to a recent Oxfam investigation, not very much. Despite the recession, the industry has seen a rise in sales with 86 tonnes of chocolate sold every second. But the rise in sales hasn't provided a better life for the more than 5.5 million small-scale farmers. Most of these small holders and cocoa workers live below the poverty line. In the Ivory Coast alone, these people would need to earn 1,608% more a year to reach it. Women make up a large percentage of those who plant, pick and process cocoa, but they are not treated as equals. According to the study, these women are usually being paid less, if anything at all, facing harassment and discrimination with no form of complaint system, not being allowed to attend training for finance and agriculture, and lacking any capital or land of their own. After around 65,000 people signed the petition, chocolate giants Mars and Nestle have committed to take action. If Mars and Nestle make a difference, it would help boost the ability of millions to earn a living, meaning hopefully, next year, you can look at your chocolate egg and know it's coming from a better place. How much chocolate was that again? 86 tonnes of chocolate sold every second. Doesn't that just make you think? And it got Phil thinking. So he's decided to provide an alternative to all this. Which, fortunately, means more of it for me. Ah. Fantastic. Well, here's Phil. So it's that time of year when we celebrate the resurrection of a guy who was crucified and then thrown into a cave. And we do this by eating eggs, chocolate eggs. I mean, what do chocolate eggs actually have to do with the resurrection of the supposed son of God? Easter has become a time when kids get really excited about all of the chocolate they're going to get. And then they just eat as much of it as they can. So, they run around getting a sugar rush, getting all excited until eventually that inevitable crash comes. Easter is as far removed from its Christian roots than it ever could be. Now it's all about buying stuff. It's a commercial, commercial, commercial festival. So commercial has it become that I will read you some headlines about Easter that were written in some financial newspapers. Easter spending boosts US retail sales. Discount promotions in the Easter holiday persuaded consumers to spend more. Easter spending expected to hop up 11%. Consumers are expected to spend 11% more than they did last year, about $16.8 billion. Easter is no longer about spring. It's no longer about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's about getting you guys to spend all your money on chocolates. But you don't have to celebrate Easter this way. In fact, there's a whole range of ways that you can celebrate the Easter festival. You can paint an egg, you can hide an egg and ask a child to go and find it. Or if you're in the Czech Republic, a very interesting practice takes place there. I wanna read you a section from a blog I found that describes this ancient uh, or old tradition. Throughout the day, men, usually in groups, visit their female relatives and friends and spank them with special whips. The women are chased around or they just stand motionless as their male visitors spank their butts. However, it should not hurt or at least not throughout the whole procedure. So if you're thinking of celebrating Easter in an alternative way where you don't have to spend money on chocolate and eggs, perhaps you could use a willow rod to spank a female or perhaps just don't bother at all. Yes, beating yourself with chains or random women with sticks both get a very big do not try this at home from us at Truthloader. Just because it's happened for a long time, that doesn't make it cool. And lastly, it wouldn't be Friday without a little bit of an investigation. So I've taken a look at the, well, let's not call it the true, but the original meaning of Easter, which does help put these into perspective. I, I can't eat another one, sorry. We might think we know what Easter is and what it represents, but that's not the whole story. You see, like many other festivals in many other major religions, look a little deeper, and Easter probably has roots far further back into the past than the resurrection of Jesus Christ and any ties with Passover. It doesn't take a genius to work out that fluffy bunnies and Easter eggs have relatively little to do with Christianity or in fact, any other modern religion. In fact, Easter was probably originally about an urge much older and more powerful than faith, sex, which puts the rabbits and the eggs in some kind of context. So here's one of the more likely alternative theories, the ancient Sumerian goddess Inanna, or Ishtar, or Easter, as she's now called. 
a commonly worshipped deity in what we now call the Middle East. She represented fertility and her followers worshipped the spring equinox, which is at roughly Easter time. That kind of makes sense. Spring is when baby animals and crops start to appear and you learn if you're going to have any food to eat for the next year. So where does Christianity come into this? How did this ancient festival about farming and babies become about Jesus? Well, the ancient festival kind of evolved. You see, if you go back far enough, Christianity never really conquered the world. It just kind of spread. And it did that by taking the best parts of the ancient pagan religions and rituals it found along the way, and then kind of jimmying into position alongside them. But the old traditions never really died out. You see, Easter falls in line with the moon cycle, which is a very pagan thing. After all, Jesus couldn't have been resurrected on a different day every year. And Easter falls on a different day every year. But let's be clear, this is a theory and I'm not attacking anyone's faith. Besides, tacking modern religious festivals onto much older ones isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it's pretty multicultural. What could be more egalitarian than sharing a festival along with all its significance and history and beliefs and traditions with someone else? And maybe that's the right message to take out of all this. It doesn't really matter where Easter comes from because everyone can enjoy it, regardless of what you believe. This is our role in the revolution. Other people are throwing stones. This, for us, is, is the role that we find as important.